Just when we thought things were starting to get better for the markets, we get hit with August inflation data, which is a big slap in the face for the feds and will most likely result in a major reset for the housing market. You see, June brought us an annual inflation rate of 9.1%. July was 8.5% and surprisingly, August was only 8.3%. Now, some of you might be saying to yourself, well, Hayden, I'm pretty sure inflation went down in August. Isn't that a good thing? And I'll agree, it is a good thing for our overall annual inflation. Smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm is also a good thing, which you should go and do right now. But the problem with August inflation is the core CPI managed to increase to 6.3% from July's 5.9%, which means inflation for the year has actually gone up. This was a huge scare to investors as it shows that the Fed's efforts to reduce inflation by raising interest rates isn't really working, especially since core inflation has been steadily declining since March of this year. The surge in the core CPI has ruined five months of hard work, moving us another month closer to seeing a 30-year mortgage rate at 8%. So why is core CPI important? Core CPI data tracks the rate of change in US inflation over time, which is based on prices that consumers pay for goods and services throughout the US. Now, the key difference between core CPI and our overall annual inflation is that it excludes two major essential goods, food and energy prices. This gives the data a better reading on consumer discretionary products and consumer demand. August brought us a 5% decline in energy prices, a 10.6% decline in gas prices, and a 0.8% increase in food prices month to month. No longer is gas $4 a gallon for regular. I'm paying $3.18 at Costco here in Florida, and I honestly never thought I'd see the day where gas nears the sub $3 range. And I'm also curious to know how much you're paying for gas and the state that you live in down in the comments below. Now, gas is clearly what helped lower our annual inflation, and I'm not complaining. It's awesome that prices are finally starting to come back down. The problem is when you remove energy and food from the data, you'll notice that many other sectors in our economy have continued to rise because overall inflation is no longer skewed by these sectors. Now, the reason you remove food and energy prices from this calculation is because their prices can be too volatile or fluctuate too much. Other sectors like medical care are still going up. Shelter like housing and rent is still going up. Clothing and of course cars and new cars have also continued to go up from the month prior. This is why core inflation was higher in August and it was a huge shock to the economy. And I'll explain how this all ties into the housing market in a second. But before I do, you need to know that things have gotten so out of control over the past couple of months that when you compare last year's food prices to this year's, Years, August actually increased by 11.4%, the biggest food inflation since May of 1979. Food at home was up 16.7%, cereals and bakery products up 16.4%, fruits and vegetables up 9.4%, and dairy and related products up 16.2%. So now to answer the question, what does food and clothing have to do with the potential crash in the housing market? Well, if the feds want to slow down inflation, which is currently the biggest problem problem America is facing, as well as lower food prices so that we're not paying $7 for a carton of eggs, then it needs to raise interest rates. And by a lot, not just a little bit. This is a chart comparing the federal funds rate to the inflation rate. Notice the funds rate, which was once close to 0% in the beginning of 2021, ends in July at 1.68%. And as of this month, we're currently sitting at 2.33% on our way up. Notice the massive gap between the two graphs and then compare them to 2019. In order for inflation to lower itself, we need the two lines to cross. Unfortunately, since the feds decided to wait so long to raise rates, by the time we see them cross, our interest rates will most likely be as high as they were during 07 and 08. Now, had we have risen the interest rates earlier, let's say mid 2021, I highly doubt we would be in this position today. With inflation on the rise, we're already starting to see a negative reaction from the housing market. And I fear this is just the beginning. Rates for the 30 year mortgage passed the 6% mark for the first time in 14 years early this month. And with the Fed's interest rates plan clearly not working, the expectation is that it will raise rates again during its September meeting by as much as 75 basis points or even 100 basis points, making it the third month in a row for a 75 basis point hike or maybe 100 basis points, indirectly raising percent for a mortgage, getting us that much closer to 8%. And the higher mortgage rates also means that sellers are beginning to cut their 
home prices to draw in more buyers. We've already seen this take place in July when home prices fell for the first time in three years. It was the biggest decline since 2011. With August inflation now out and the Feds eager to raise rates in September, I'm sure we'll be making headlines again for another housing drop. While all this is happening, we're also beginning to see an influx in housing inventory being added to the market. And this is expected as sales volume falls while inventories rise, and that means that months of supply naturally increases. You see, there's just not enough people anymore to keep up with the previous supply. So more houses are beginning to sit on the market. This will most likely continue long into 2023 until inflation has been contained. So expect there to be higher inventory of houses and expect mortgage rates to near 8% and even expect the price for houses to cool off as well. Most places will probably experience only a minimal decline over the next couple of years, but the places where prices surged in the good times will suffer bigger declines in the tough times ahead. Now, during normal market conditions, mortgage interest rates and home price appreciation have had a positive but weak relationship. That is, higher mortgage rates tend to occur alongside higher home price appreciation, but it is a weak tendency. As you can see on the chart, each dot represents the year-over-year -year change in the mortgage rate and the annual home price appreciation for each month since 1976. As you can see, there's not much movement, but when mortgage rates go up, we also see a modest increase in home appreciation. This is due to the affiliation that higher mortgage rates and higher interest rates have historically been associated with periods of stronger economic growth, higher inflation, lower unemployment, and even stronger wage growth. As you can see on this next chart, inflation and home price appreciation correlates quite well. And when the inflation rate increases, the price of homes also increase. It's a much stronger correlation than mortgage rates and home prices. So if we look at today's market, we know that the price for housing has exploded at the same time in inflation has. And under normal market conditions, we would expect to see the increase in interest rates and inflation increase the price for homes. Now, the difference with today's market, however, is that these are by no means normal market conditions. Over the last three decades, the Feds have nudged its benchmark interest rate up or down by an average of 25 basis points, preferring to steer the economy at low speed. But surging inflation compelled the central bank in June to implement a rate hike of three times that size, marking the first time since 1994 that the feds has rolled out a 75 basis point increase and july's rate hike represents the first time in modern fed history that the central bank has raised interest rates by 75 basis points twice in a row now we even expect a third one to happen in just a few days this explosive pace towards raising interest rates has a shocking effect on home prices unlike what the normal market data showed since 1976 mortgage rates in the united states have slowly declined but there have been a few periods when interest interest rates have increased by more than one and a half percentage points year over year. Keep in mind, since January of this year, we've already increased by 2.5 percentage points, much faster than during the housing crisis of 07 and 08. Now, the two periods during which rates rose rapidly were from September 1979 to March of 1982, and from September of 1994 to February of 1995, something that's now happening for a third time as I speak. Now, during those two previous periods, the rate of home price appreciation decelerated rapidly. From September of 1979 to March 1982, home price appreciation decelerated from 12.9% to 1.1%. And from September 1994 to February of 1995, it decelerated from 3.2% to 2.6%. You see, for each period, real home price appreciation was negative for some part of the period, but nominal home prices did not turn negative until a recession was underway, which, as you know, were either in or about to be in in today's market. So where does that all leave us with today? Truly, I don't believe something similar will happen, and I don't believe housing prices will fall 50%. But I do believe that a dump for the housing market is coming. I also don't think that we will ever see the prices we saw pre-pandemic happen again. I don't think we'll fall back down to that level. I believe there's a good chance the median housing price will come down, maybe 10-ish percent or so, maybe by the start of 2023. And if that doesn't happen, then I would expect to see at least a few years of stagnant housing growth where prices stay the same for maybe 2023 and 2024. Now, with that all being said, guys, let me know what you think about the housing market down in the comments below. Do you think there's going to be a crash or do you think we're going to keep exploding in price? And also don't forget to let me know how much you pay for gas and where you're from. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.